Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today I want to talk about daily cervical fluid or daily discharge, whatever you want to call it. I personally call it cervical fluid because the majority of what you see is your cervical fluid. So I recently did a menstrual cup Q&A. Was it last week? Either last week or two weeks before. Anyways, I'll put it up here and down below if you want to go watch it. And one of the questions I received a few times was to the extent of, is a menstrual cup a good option for daily use for daily discharge? Because they were said they were experiencing, you know, an overwhelming amount of daily discharge. And this got me really thinking. It made me very intrigued of what is considered too much fluid fluid, why are these women experiencing it, what does this actually mean to them, and so I wanted to dig into it a little bit deeper. So I reached out and asked for anyone who thought they were experiencing an overwhelming amount of daily fluid to email me and share their experience and why they choose or think they need to wear something on a daily basis. And while I found that there were some genuine concerns with the amount of fluid they were experiencing or why they were experiencing that, I really discovered that a lot of people don't know what constitutes as normal and they don't know whether what they are experiencing could be considered normal or not. So I just want to start all this by saying that the amount and type of fluid you're experiencing depends on a factor of things, you know, where you are in your cycle, how hydrated you are, what sort of medications you're taking. Just because what you're experiencing is different than a friend or a sister does not make you abnormal. Right after you finish your period, you might not notice any cervical fluid or it might feel slightly wet, but there's not anything substantial to note. As you move closer to ovulation, you're going to start experiencing more cervical fluid and you're going to start experiencing experiencing creamy, lotiony cervical fluid, and then egg white and watery cervical fluid, depending on how close you are to your ovulation. If you're in that few day range of experiencing egg white fertile cervical fluid, this is when you might have that sensation of like, God, it just feels like I'm leaking. Did I just pee myself? And you might find yourself rushing to the bathroom thinking you peed yourself or like started your period or something weird like that, only to find a glob of fluid in your underwear that resembles something like raw egg whites. And that's why it's called egg white cervical fluid. But this is completely and perfectly normal. And I can't stress this enough. Experiencing a glob of something in your underwear, experiencing that sensation of like, it feels like I'm peeing myself, is completely normal. It is your body doing its job. It is your reproductive system going through its cycle. And there's nothing to be concerned about. If you can see what type of cervical fluid you're experiencing just by looking in your underwear, and you don't even have to swipe to check that day, that's completely normal. There have been plenty of times where I've been like, oh look, there's my egg white cervical fluid and I'll wipe it out of my underwear with a piece of toilet paper and go about my day. You're going to have stuff in your underwear, like that's it, plain and simple. There's going to be stuff in your underwear. Your underwear are never going to say, dry or clean there's stuff that's going to be in there and if anyone tries to tell you otherwise like if anyone tries to tell you that your underwear should be clean throughout the day they are high as hell or they are a damn liar because that does not happen so after ovulation some women's fluid dries up until their period comes and goes again but some women like myself experience some sort of fluid cycle round and i will even get a couple days of like creamy or even egg white like cervical fluid right before my period starts and I know to expect it and when it happens I don't freak out and go what's wrong with my body. There was one woman who made a very good point when she emailed me. She said that women who are pregnant experience more cervical fluid and I have heard this from more than one pregnant person. <laughs> so if you feel uncomfortable by the amount of cervical fluid you're experiencing on a daily basis it really is just up to you what you feel comfortable doing but I want to share my thoughts and maybe some like advice I have to offer but take from this what you want and just in the end do what makes you feel most comfortable. Obviously, number one, don't douche ever. I don't feel like I need to mention that, but I think I still do because I think there still are people that will douche or try to like clean out the inside of their vagina, which you should never do. And while a lot of women do this, I really don't recommend wearing disposable panty liners on a daily basis. And I know this is one of the easiest ways to manage any sort of discharge or cervical fluid that makes you feel uncomfortable, but you gotta let your goods breathe. And often blocking off airflow with a disposable of panty liner is going to cause more harm than good. Personally, I recommend getting some good quality cotton underwear. Thick enough to have your back, but thin enough to where your body can breathe. And so that thickness just depends on whatever you're comfortable with. But I think allowing airflow to your nether regions is such an important thing. You could also look into some sort of moisture wicking underwear. I think there's a lot of like athletic styles out there. 
and this would just be a good way to like move the moisture away from your body so you're not feeling it. Or another suggestion I saw was to carry an extra pair of underwear around in your purse or in your backpack and just switch it out at some point during the day when you find yourself feeling uncomfortable. And while it might go against everything that like makes you feel comfortable, I recommend if you're at home, maybe going commando for a while, just really to let some airflow going. And I'm not talking around like walking around without pants on, <laughs> just like you could do that. Just wearing like a loose pair of sweatpants or shorts and just letting letting it all breathe and I know personally going commando in public like under jeans or leggings I really don't like it it makes me cringe being at home and going commando or maybe sleeping with the underwear on might be a great option just to get some airflow down there Underwear is not going to last you forever. It's not going to last as long as a good pair of jeans or maybe a good pair of shoes. You're going to have to buy new underwear every couple years and that is okay. Buying new underwear and going through new underwear doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. Your underwear are gonna have holes, tears, stains, you name it, and you're going to have to buy new underwear and get rid of your old pairs of underwear. This doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It really just means that your body is functioning properly. Okay, so say you're not comfortable with just putting on a nice pair of cotton underwear and going about your day. That's okay, I understand that. So there are a number of options when it comes to period underwear or postpartum underwear that might be a good option for you. I currently have two pairs of, we'll call them period underwear from a brand called Nyxwear, and I'll link them down below. One of them is moisture wicking, and they both have just like the thinnest layer of added protection and i think this would be perfect for those of you that want to wear something on a daily basis and it's nice to just have like dedicated period underwear or dedicated fluid underwear for the days that you have more fluid i had one gal recommend using thin reusable panty liners and she had mentioned a couple brands that she liked and she had also mentioned measuring the width of fabric that like goes between your crotch and to not get a panty liner that is wider than that. She also said to get reusable panty liners with some sort of backing that had like a little bit of texture to it because if you have something that's super smooth, it's just gonna make it slide around and not stay in place as easily. But if that back fabric has a bit of grip, it might stay in place a little bit easier. So depending on the type of underwear you wear, thongs versus briefs, as well as the type of fabric and the thickness of that fabric will all determine how fast you are soaking through a pair of underwear. So if you're wearing like a silky thin thong, you're obviously going to leak through that a lot faster than maybe a medium thickness pair of like cotton briefs. Underwear is like a security blanket for me. I love wearing underwear. Like I said, going commando in jeans or leggings, I just don't like it. And this is all to say, it's just what makes you feel most comfortable. But I do wanna say, cervical fluid is normal. Daily cervical fluid is normal. A lot of fluid is normal. Seeing fluid in your underwear is normal. And I'm not doing this to embarrass anyone or shun someone like, oh, you should know this. I'm saying this because as a teenager, I wish someone would just said, what you're experiencing, Victoria, is normal because I went for far too long thinking that I was somehow sick because there was stuff in my underwear because no one talked about it I didn't talk to anyone about it my mom didn't talk about it. my sister didn't talk about it I just thought people with their underwear like something was dirty or there's something wrong with them but I cannot stress it enough it is completely normal do what feels most comfortable for you and don't be embarrassed ever about any of it that's what I have to say today about daily fluid and some options for you and some things to think about. I hope it helped. If you guys have any experience with this or advice to share with someone maybe younger than you, comment that down below. Don't forget to subscribe to Femhead for more videos from me. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's content and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!